Let's play with some grapes. Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Beaver and today we answer the question that I have been getting a lot. Why did I use raisins to make a banana rain? Two reasons why I used raisins. Number one is it is available all year round. So it doesn't matter when you want to make a banana rain, you can pop down to your nearest shop and more than likely pick up some raisins. Reason number two is uh, fresh grapes are a hell of expensive and uh, to get enough grapes to make a decent brana vein, yeah, that's going to cost a lot of money. Luckily, my father-in-law has a Rio in Afrikaans or a arbor of uh, grapes in his yard and I managed to get my hands on five kilograms of grapes now these grapes are slippertis i don't know what their real genus or make or brand is all i know is they're nice and sour sweet grapes and yeah they are in different stages of the ripening process majority of them are nice and ripe so we can use these bad boys to make a brandy or a brunavain using some fresh grapes. Now these grapes were frozen as I picked them, put them in a bag, put them into the freezer, get them all frozen. Once again, reason for doing that is to allow that crystal that forms while freezing to break down the cell walls of the fruit, allowing you to extract a lot more flavor out of your fruit. Now if you want to learn more about improving your fruit washes, once again, link to the video will be up here with my five tips to improve your fruit washes one of the tips is to freeze them so yeah now let's move on to the next piece and this is the piece that i'm not looking forward to at all and that is uh, to get all of these babies off of their stems now yeah that's going to be a fun one. First method I'm going to try is I'm going to submerge these babies in water, a little bit of water. Then I'm going to take my drill with my blender attachment or my mixer attachment on the front, dunk all these grapes in there and then just start blitzing them up. And hopefully these stems will float to the top and we will be able to pick them off the top. Otherwise, yeah. Short of me standing here and picking every grape off of the stem. Yeah, not looking forward to that, but yeah, let's get into the drill. Hopefully it works. Hold thumbs. Comment down below if you think it's gonna work. Idea number one worked, and we managed to separate all the skins and stems and everything from the nice juice. So uh, all we need to do now is filter out all the skins and the stems and then add this into our fermentation bucket. time to see if we can strain out the majority of the juice and squeeze out just a little bit more because I spilled everything on the floor again me and taps with as much of the good stuff squeezed out as possible what I did is just to compensate a little bit more for the sugars that I needed to get from the grapes, I opted to get some red grape juice. Now, once again, check that it's preservative free. 
you can't find a preservative free version yes your yeast will work depending on how strong your yeast is and you might have to over pitch so the yeast can overcome that nutrient but if you can always go preservative free it just makes the yeast job a lot easier now what I want to do is I want to add two liters of this red grape juice into this take a gravity reading and then see if I need to adjust with sugar and that's another question that I get asked a lot is how do you plan a recipe now it's quite simple go onto the internet find a fruit or find whatever you want to work with see what the sugar content of it is and then work from there so normally when you type into google it will give you the grams of sugar per 100 gram of fruit or cereal or whatever you're going to type in there and then you can work from there and then check out the five quick tips once again where i explain how much of the sugar from your wash needs to come from the fruit to maximize the flavor because once you hit a specific point yeah you're not going to get any more flavor out of it than you would if you just use that specific percentage that i discussed in the video up there now let's quickly add our two liters of grape juice with everything mixed up it's time to take our gravity reading now i'm not expecting this to have a high gravity at all if we hit anything over a 1.030 i would be greatly surprised or very surprised and then we need to then then i'll show you the process i use to calculate how much additional sugar i need to add to this to get it to a gravity or a a potential alcohol level which will be suitable for us to run through the still because if we run anything below six percent through the still our energy and time spent to get that little bit of alcohol out of the wash is just yeah it's just a waste for home distillers we're looking for anything above eight percent abv when we are distilling so we maximize the energy and maximize our time to ensure that we get a good quality product so yeah let's quickly get the gravity reading enough of me babbling as expected we hit a gravity of just over a 1.030 giving us a potential alcohol of five percent now if we were going to turn this into a cider or a uh, a beer yes then we can go ahead or not a beer but a wine then we can go ahead and just pitch our yeast as is. What we're going to do now is uh, we need to calculate on a total volume how much sugar we need to add to get it to run about, I'm shooting for about 10%. So uh, yeah, it's double the sugar we have in here now. Now it's time to calculate what we need to add in sugar. So we're currently sitting at roughly about 10 liters of wash at five percent if we just top it up with water all the way to our 20 liter limit that we need to go to we will set it be sitting on roughly two and a half percent abv now two and a half percent abv not enough at all so how i calculate it is quite simple i just subtract the amount of sugar that's currently in here and then calculate on one of these alcohol calculators how much sugar I need to add. I would suggest if you want to get into doing your own recipes, download an Alco calculator to your phone or to your tablet or to even to your PC. I'll post the link to the one I use. It's free to use. It's not a sponsor of the show at all, but I just love this calculator. So for us to get 2.5% ABV in a 20 liter wash, we need to add roughly one kilogram of sugar. So one kilogram of sugar will give us 3% in a 20 liter wash. For us to get to 10%, we need to add four kilograms of sugar. So we already have one kilogram of sugar from our grapes and our grape juice. What we need to do now is add an additional three kilograms of sugar to the wash to get it to our desired level now this is not an exact 
measurement by any stretch yes you can get very complicated with this if you want to but this is the simple method i use so i'm going to start off first by just adding two additional kilograms of sugar get it all mixed and dissolved and then i'm going to test to see if i need to add more and then hopefully end up on my three kilogram mark so starting off we're going to add two kilograms of sugar to this get our level to roughly just below 20 liters so we can always top, top it up a little bit Three kilograms of sugar in the bucket now we are sitting on a original gravity of let me just double check it before I say something 1.072 so that should give us a ABV of just over 11% if this thing ferments out dry which I do expect it will do because there's uh, yeah basically just grapes and sugar in there nothing uh, strange that won't ferment so uh, yeah with that original gravity i'm happy to pitch the yeast here's a quick side note while this thing is all finished and i remembered to say this now i did not boil the grapes that question is going to come up in the comment section why did you not boil the fruit well, the reason I didn't boil the fruit is I'm hoping there is some yeast strain on that fruit there that will complement the flavors of this to do a semi-natural fermentation. But yes, I did add yeast in there. So hopefully that natural yeast on there will complement the flavor of the grapes. That's the reason why I didn't boil the fruit. Now, if you want consistent results every single time with a specific flavor profile, then yes, boil your fruit to remove any chance of contamination from any other yeast that might linger in the fruit. That's the reason why I didn't boil it, because I know that question is going to come up. Now, the yeast we will be using once again will be the Bootleggers Brandy Yeast. Why do I use this yeast so much? Well, number one, it chews through sugar like no one's business. And number two, it loves the fruity flavors and it enhances any fruity flavor exponentially. I'm very impressed with the yeast and I keep using it. Let's get some bootlegger yeast in here, get the lid on and then let this baby ferment up. Now if you stuck around this far, thank you very much so far for sticking around. Just want to give a quick update to everybody. Our first beer has arrived. Um, for our beer to whiskey series we're going to be doing. We're going to be starting off with one of my personal favorite beers. If you want to give a couple of tips or if you want to uh, suggest maybe a different method of doing it, please let me know in the comments below and below. But the theory or the idea behind the series will be to brew a beer. From start to finish, make a beer. Then get it all bottled up and ready to drink. Then we will make exactly the same wash with exactly the same mash bill. The only difference is we are not going to hop the distiller's beer. A normal beer we will hop, the distiller's beer we are not going to hop. We are going to then distill that distiller's beer. We are going to do a side by side comparison of the beer and the finished whiskey. Not the aged whiskey, just the white whiskey to see what kind of flavors we pulled out of the out of the wash that ended up in the beer so yeah that's the basic idea brands in the corner there and yeah as always have a lucky day <laughs>